Hello, in this video we're going to talk about labor, specifically focusing on stage one of labor. This is an overview and won't look into too much detail and there's probably going to be a few things that might be different to everyone, but this is just an overview so hopefully it will help. So let's just recap the anatomy of the fetus within the uterus. So the fetus is here, there's a placenta, the umbilical cord connects the placenta with the fetus and it provides the fetus with nutrients and it takes away um, all, the, all the waste from the fetus to the placenta as well. Now the fetus is actually within an amniotic sac or the amniotic membrane and this sac contains the amniotic fluid which is sometimes referred to as lycor. A comment about the amniotic fluid so initially, the placenta actually makes the amni amniotic fluid. But after a while, the fetus actually takes over and basically is the fetus is peeing out stuff and this becomes the amniotic fluid. And the fetus also swallows this fluid again back to the lungs. Now, let us put the fetus surrounded by the amniotic sac into the uterus. The placenta actually connects to the uterus and the placenta it implants into the uterus. The amniotic sac then surrounds the whole area and then the fetus is within the amniotic sac. So here is the umbilical cord, the uterus, the amniotic sac, the cervix and the vagina wall. Here, the cervix is 0% effaced. What I mean by effaced is essentially thinning of the cervix, which is important for labor or for delivery. Drawing out the diagram again, we are now in front of the cervix and in front of the cervix there's actually a mucus plug and the mucus plug forms because the estrogen that is being produced throughout pregnancy. The estrogen helps form the mucus plug and the mucus plug is important in preventing things from entering the cervix during pregnancy such as bacteria. Labor begins when the woman has regular painful contractions with cervix effacement plus minus dilatation of the cervix as well. Stage one of labor is actually divided into two phases. The initial phase, also known as the latent phase, and then there is the active phase. Here in this drawing, you can see the cervix has thinned out. The cervix effacement is where there is thinning and there's shortening. And then following effacement, you can also get cervix dilatation. When, when a woman enters labor, the mucus plug is usually already out. So drawing out the same diagram, but this time showing the whole cervix as though looking at it head on, we can see the cervix here is slightly dilated. The mucus plug has already come off, and this is what we call the show. The show is usually clear mucoid-like discharge, indicating that labor is about to occur and indicating that the mucus plug has just come off. Then, when labor begins, this is where you start getting the regular uterine contractions which are painful. With these uterine contractions, the cervix is, becomes further dilated. And what happens is that with regular painful contractions, there is actually an increase in intrauterine pressure. This increase in intrauterine pressure will result in rupturing of the amniotic sac within the uterus. And this is what is called spontaneous rupture of membranes or water breaking. The woman often say, my water broke. When the water breaks, what they are actually talking about is the amniotic fluid which is within the amniotic sac coming out. It's important to know that the water or the fluid in this instance is usually clear, which is normal. However, if the amniotic fluid is green or smelly, this indicates meconium. Meconium is the first poo that is passed out by the fetus. And this can actually be dangerous because if the fetus pooed in the amniotic fluid, the fetus can actually swallow this amniotic fluid and it can actually go into the lungs. This is known as aspiration 
and it can cause respiratory problems called meconium aspiration. Spontaneous rupture of membranes can occur anywhere along the amniotic sac, not necessary near the cervix. Anyways, rupture of the membranes can be spontaneous as we discussed, and this occurs during labor or even before a woman enters labor. Sometimes during labor, when the, uter when the uterus is contracting, the amniotic sac doesn't rupture. When this happens, sometimes the amniotic sac is ruptured artificially. Let's take a look at this. Here again is the same diagram. Here is the uterus, the placenta. The uterus is contracting regularly, but maybe the uterine contractions are weak, and so the amniotic sac is still intact. Here is the amniotic sac containing the amniotic fluid. Here is the cervix, which is partially dilated. Artificial rupture of membranes is also known as amniotomy, which is where a doctor or a midwife will rupture the amniotic sac with a sort of small hook. And this can induce or it can accelerate labor. However, there are many contraindications of artificial rupture of membranes. For example, rupturing of membranes artificially is contraindicated if the baby, if the fetus is in a breech position, which is where the baby is positioned feet first. And this can be found out if with an ultrasound of, of, or an abdominal examination. The other contraindication of uh, premature, uh, rupturing of the membranes artificially is placental previa, where the placenta is lying close to the cervix, actually over the cervix, over the internal os. And it's important to not perform any form of vaginal examination before placenta previa is ruled out. And placenta previa can be ruled out with ultrasound. Again, just recapping, you have spontaneous rupture of membranes, which occurs spontaneously during labor or before. Then you have artificial rupture of membranes, which is performed by someone to help induce labor or help accelerate labor. Then there is rupture of membranes, but happens before term. So what I mean is before 37 weeks, and this is called premature rupture of membranes. And again, this is rupturing of the membranes, rupturing of the amniotic sac before 37 weeks gestation. So here the fetus is less than 37 weeks old. And the baby, the fetus, might be very small, but the water has broke. Now in this scenario, the baby might have to be delivered. Now let's go back to spontaneous rupture of membranes. So again, we talked about how stage one is divided into two phases, the initial phase and the active phase. Once the cervix is over three centimeters dilated, we are already in the active phase of the first stage of labor. And this patient has ruptured their membrane, so we have already reduced amniotic fluid here. And the uterus is still contracting regularly with painful contractions. With regular painful uterine contractions, the cervix is dilating even further until there is what's known as crowning. Crowning is where the head of the baby is fully on the cervix opening. Crowning is where the cervix is fully dilated, which is about 10 centimeters, the cervix is dilated, and you can see the baby's head hanging there. The cervix is fully dilated when it is 10 centimeters, and when it is 10 centimeters, labor will, enter, will finish the first stage and then will enter the second stage. An important point to make. Now, the first stage of labor can be very long, especially for nully paradis women. So a woman with, who has their first pregnancy or first delivery. Often the first stage can be so difficult that there is no progress at all. And thus we call this failure to progress. There is failure to progress in every stage of labor, stage one, stage two, stage three. Failure to progress in stage one of labor is different to, between nulliparous and multiparous women. 
Stage one is divided into the initial and active phase, remember. Normally, in the initial phase in a nully paratus woman should take less than 20 hours. And if it's longer, it may indicate failure to progress. For multi paratus women, the initial phase would be no longer than 14 hours. So you can already tell that multi paratus women is a lot quicker because this is their second or third or fourth pregnancy. Now for the active phase, which starts once the cervix is three centimeters dilated, the dilatation of the cervix is usually at a rate of one, at least 1.2 centimeters every hour for a gnarly paris woman. However, for a multi paris woman, this is a lot faster, more than 1.5 centimeters per hour. And if it's a lot slower than this, it might indicate failure to progress and interventions might be needed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This was a video which mainly focused on stage one of labor. It did not talk about stage two or stage three. Thank you for watching.